All right, so in this video, it's going to be part of a brake job video. We're building a uh, brake drum and rotor puller. So basically, I've got some uh, scrap stainless here. Let's try to figure out what the measurements of it are. Basically, this rotor is uh, 13 inches wide. And I've got some pieces of stainless here that are 16 inches. Some uh, strap that's about eight and a quarter inches long by uh, two inch, and it's uh, touch over uh, quarter inch thick. Maybe it is about quarter inch. Except this metric. So basically, what we want to do is uh, use part of a, a regular bearing puller. Have this inside of it. And then have this come down and grab onto the rotor so you can pull it out. So you can buy a tool online that does this, but the stores are closed. It's not available. So I'm just trying to work with the materials that I've got here to pull this off. So basically all I've got here is uh, a half inch cordless drill. Some Milwaukee, of, they're good drill bits. This cuts through a stainless really well. I did like a, a 7 32nd pilot, then a half inch to go through. I tried to use the 8 inch bit, but it wasn't working, it was worn out. So the uh, titanium bits, these things are great. And uh, the half inch bolt fits through the half inch, so I don't need to go a size up. It worked out really good. And then for cutting the material, I just have a Milwaukee or a, a Diablo uh, blade for stainless for cutting it with a grinder, and it's been working really well. Some rotors are about an inch and a quarter thick, so I could have gone further depending on the rotor, but this will work on the back rotors that I need to work with, and it just weakens it the more you cut it. So if I have to take off a different set of rotors, I'll cut that differently. So aside from that, I just have to drill some through holes on the angle so that I can uh, move on to the next step. So we'll drill one hole and see how it goes. Just have to put the other bit on. Just use the self-setting punch. Put a bit of oil on there. Kind of feel for the uh, spot that we're headed for. So we're just drilling on low speed. You don't want it to smoke. Starting to get a good bite there now. So you can see I went through the stainless. This is 308 stainless. Now obviously this is gonna bite when it gets to the end. Didn't have it set quite right in the chuck. Just about through now. So that's through. So you can see the kind of way this is going to grab and the press is going to come out through here. 
So uh, I'll just finish putting this together and then we'll show you the finished product. All right, so we got the tool kind of roughed out now. I had to experiment with the uh, spacing of the uh, jaws on here. So this uh, disc is about 13 inches in diameter. Ended up making the uh, spacing on these bolts uh, also about 13 inches in center to center. And then if I have to grind out these jaws a little bit more, I'll do that because it needs to be pulling nice and straight because there's going to be quite a bit of pressure on this. If it's on some funny angle, it's never going to do it. So you can see that I went from a fairly small puller with these jaws here. It's able to make a 13 inch wide puller. So in the next part of the video, which I'll probably be filming tomorrow, depending on how things go, we'll pick, pull the uh, rear rotors off of this vehicle. So I tried to take the rear rotors off of here two years ago and they were stuck. And you can't just keep pounding on them because you'll ruin the uh, wheel bearings. And this vehicle is kind of unique. It's uh, all wheel drive. And the, uh, it's sort of like a full floating axle where the uh, axle shafts are kind of riding on the inside and they're not providing any support. So in this vehicle, you really don't want to damage the uh, hubs because you could lose a wheel possibly. So uh, it also has a, a hollow core in the axle. So that's why I'll need to use this uh, plate when I'm using the puller so I don't pierce into the axle because there's like a 24 inch shaft that's just kind of floating around in there. But in most vehicles you'll either be pushing on the end of a solid axle or a CV shaft and you won't need that plate. But uh, I will in this case. So hopefully that fits in between the studs. I've got wheel spacers on here so I'll have to pull those off to get in all the way. But like I said, you can't just be pounding on the uh, brake discs or brake drums because it'll ruin the uh, wheel bearings eventually or you could tweak the shaft. So uh, thanks for following up this far and uh, like I said we'll wrap up the video hopefully with a success story. Alright so I got the tool set up so I just I used a uh, wrench just to tighten on the uh, arms here and here so these are tight. I used a hammer to kind of set them against the rotor as best I could. I'm just going to put a bit of oil on here so it doesn't bind up because it's coming off. So let's see uh, if this comes off or if it's not going to be uh, worth the effort. Yeah, it's trying to pop off here. I was thinking about making a bar to go across if I had to. Didn't expect it to be easy. I wasn't sure how hard it was going to be either. Sometimes it's good once you get some pressure on something is to tap on. So this may be, look like a failure, but it's actually, this will be one of the harder ones you'll see to have to take off. So we're going to be patient. We're going to keep working on it. And I'm sure this tool would work a lot better for you if it wasn't as far gone as this vehicle. This 
metal plate worked out to be really a good size just to kind of fit in here and sit on the studs. It's easier to work. Sort of like a three arm job to do this. We have to be successful, so we're going to make it work. I think we got it. So I haven't adjusted the uh, parking brake at all. It looks like I need to take a look at that. But as you can see, the tool worked. It didn't cost me any money. It just basically made it out of a puller I had in the garage, plus some scrap metal that I had. So that's one option to follow if you uh, don't have a proper tool. So we'll move on. All right, so I'm gonna take off the last brake rotor. And I'm just to go full on my master cylinder. So I have a mighty vac vacuum. I'm just gonna suck out a little bit of this fluid here. Show you how easy it is. Just turn up the pressure. And it just sucks it out. And then you can see it's back washing a bit in. You wanna avoid that. cleaning out the hose right now but you can see how easy that is you don't need to risk getting any brake fluid on anything so now that I've got that taken care of we'll go back and take out the last rotor all right we're going to give this another shot this side is on the driver's side and it's even worse with rust but I'm just going to give it one go here I've tightened these bolts here again and hope it holds on. Nope, so it looks like I'll have to try to set it again and go a bit slower. So it might benefit from having a crossbar holding this in position. But uh, on the positive side, it does make an impossible job possible. If anything, I should have another washer on each side because it's kind of grabbing hold of the uh, bar and it might be part of the reason it's spinning this off. So I'll get set up again and we'll, we'll try it again. Alright, so going full bore didn't work out. So I'm just going to put a bit of tension on this. Do some tapping. And then just kind of go gentle and watch the uh, jaws. There, we got it. Perfect. I adjusted the uh, brake on this one. We should be able to get this off relatively easily. Relatively, of course. Not easily. I'm trying to grab where this cast piece is. I used a hammer to get the rest of the way. And there we go. 
go. We've got this uh, rotten old rotor off. See there's not much uh, left of it. Clean that off, do the brake job, and we'll be all set.